Hi everyone, welcome to the second video of a five part series on Mastering Communication and Building Relationships. The book I'm reviewing throughout the series is I'm Surrounded by Idiots, written by Swedish behavioral expert Thomas Ericsson. And the book essentially puts forward there are four personality cards out there, each with a unique set of characteristics, preferences, temperament, stress factors. You get the idea. So, to understand what personality card you are, I've created a questionnaire that you can access in the description of this video below. And it's for free, so why not? And of course, you might not speak one personality color, but perhaps a combination of two or three. In any case, the color you score the highest on, that's more of your natural state. So that's the main personality color that you are as an individual. So of course, understanding these different personality colors lets you tailor your approach, making you much more convincing and appealing. And therefore, the book develops your communication skills, your interpersonal skills, your managerial skills, and also lets you build much stronger relationships, both in your personal and in your work life. So. Without further ado, let's dive into the video itself and let's get started and look into the yellows. Guys, I'm really sorry. Uh, my idea throughout the series was to match the colour of the top I was wearing to the respective personality colour. Unfortunately, I don't actually own any yellow tops. I don't think it's a colour I can actually pull off. So let's just pretend the top I'm wearing is yellow. And of course, I'm talking about the yellows. Now, if you could describe the yellows in one word, it would be entertaining. And that's because the yellows are the types of people who practically dance into a room with a lovely smile on their face. They're more than happy to sit down and have a long, lovely chat about anything you want. And they're also the types of people who will be the first to laugh at a joke, no matter how bad or daft that joke might be. Yellows are also quite notorious for having such a fantastically positive outlook on life that it's very infectious. It's quite difficult to remain grumpy around a yellow because their natural positivity tends to elevate the moods of everyone around them quite effortlessly. Yellows also have exceptional people skills. And what I mean by that is, is that they're generally able to make a connection with nearly everybody they meet. It's as if you meet a yellow and you're already known them for most of life. You've got that instant connection with a yellow and that's because they don't have that awkwardness or that formality that a green, a blue or a red might have. So if you invite them over to your place, for example, they won't sit down formally as most of the other personality colors will. Instead, they might even stretch themselves out on the sofa. And that's because they just feel at ease in social situations and they already feel like you're going to be the best of friends, even if you just met them in the first few minutes. And this description kind of fits in with how yellows will perceive themselves. So if you ask yellow to describe themselves, they might use words such as communicative, uh, enthusiastic and inspiring, being very much creative and spontaneous, and being very well connected, outgoing and social. Now, yellows have a number of strengths. Let's start off with their spontaneity and their creativity. So, for example, let's say you have an idea and you're unsure which direction to exactly take, uh, how it's going to pan out. Well, my advice to you would be to seek out a yellow. And that's because the first time you bounce that idea off, they're going to give you a number of suggestions within the first few minutes. And that's because they're going to exercise both their creativity, their spontaneity and their fast tempo. But it's not just that. If, for example, you're quite a critical person generally and you need a little bit of a push or some enthusiasm and positive energy to get you going, a yellow will reply with a great deal of enthusiasm, positivity, and it might just be exactly what you need to have that initial push to really get your project going. So a typical yellow is both highly energetic and enthusiastic. And what this means is, is that a yellow is a natural salesperson. Their charm, their positive energy and their overall enthusiasm is already going to slowly lower your defences down. You can't help but take a shine to this general lovable person. But then they're going to start selling to you. And they're going to paint a picture with fantastic glowing sentences that paints the picture with vivid imagery and colours. And you can naturally feel yourself being a part of this picture. So that old saying of that person can sell a snow to an Eskimo. I'm pretty sure that person was the yellow because they're just naturally good salespeople. And it's not just snow that the yellows are good at selling. For example, when I was in my internship in Luton, there was a local nightclub and it was easiestly the worst nightclub I've ever been to. They sold really crappy cheap alcohol and it always gave me a raging hangover the next morning. And I'm not the person who goes out constantly, but there was a yellow on my internship program and he was such a good convincer, such a natural salesman, that for some reason, despite not being a fan of nightclubs, not liking drinking that much, I would always end up seeing myself on that really crappy nightclub on a weekday with such a raging home the next day that it just underlines how good the yellows are at selling stuff. And it's not just that. 
because they're so social and outgoing and they love getting people involved, they typically have really strong social networks as well. That yellow's enthusiastic response to you bouncing that initial idea off them, well that helps explain why yellows have such exceptional people skills. It's not a forced characteristic. Yellows have a genuine love for people and you cannot help but warm to someone with such a sunny disposition. That was pretty good pun, I didn't even intend that. <laughs> So I started off by talking about the strengths of a yellow by saying, if you have an idea, seek out a yellow. And the reason behind that is, yellows are by far the most creative of all the personality types. They can have fantastic ideas just by crossing a road. Don't ask me how that works because I genuinely have no clue. I have the creativity of a wooden plank and I'm very much happy in my structured world of order. So that's the thing, Na yellows, when it comes to thinking outside the box, that's their natural element. But for all their creativity and all their enthusiasm, yellows are weaknesses just like the rest of us. So it's undoubtedly clear that yellows are easily the most creative of all the personality types. But there's a key distinction between having an idea and actually making that idea transition into a reality. How do you get from A to B, from start to finish? And this is all about follow through. This is about making sure you have proper execution, a detailed roadmap, and making sure that everything is gonna flow consistently and coherently. And this planning, this execution, this is something that yellow just doesn't do so well in. And another weakness about a yellow is the fact they just don't know when to shut up. Yellows naturally gravitate towards a spotlight. So they're quite happy to talk and talk and talk and chatter. And that might be perfectly ideal if, for example, they're giving a presentation or they're talking about themselves or, for example, they're doing public speaking. But at a meeting, if this goes unchecked, this could pose a massive problem. And that's because if a yellow constantly talks and talks and talks, that means for the more introverted, the more passive individuals, the blues and the greens, this means that their valuable contributions could be lost. The book actually cites an example of a yellow CEO, and this CEO dominated a board meeting to the extent that 69% of the meeting was him talking. And whilst there is a need for a leader, the issue is, is that person should facilitate the conversation. That should celebrate the diversity of individuals. Everyone has something to bring to the table. And of course, if a yellow simply goes on and on and on and on, that means that all the valuable contributions of the different individuals, that could be lost. So it's quite important that a yellow knows when to shut up. Another weakness of the yellows is the fact they typically have lower levels of structure. And that's because they hate repetition, they hate the monotonuity of that, and they also hate having to do things in a very structured way. And that's because they would prefer to have a much more flexible way of working. They'd much rather have their options open and enjoy a level of spontaneity in their work. And whilst that is really ideal when it comes to launching a project, that is really, really bad when it comes to finishing a project. So for example, do those final checks to make sure everything is perfect before it actually gets delivered and sent out to the customer or the stakeholder. That's where a yellow typically tends to fail. So when it comes to getting on with a yellow, it's actually quite an easy thing to do. Yellows are notorious for elevating the mood of the people they're around, so you're already gonna feel quite comfortable around that person. But make sure you're smiling, you're laughing at their jokes. When it comes to work, have a little bit of a chat before you jump straight into business, and this will go a long way in helping you build a strong relationship with that yellow. They're going to treat you like they already know you're their new best friend. So if you adopt this, they're going to be quite receptive to that as well, so you can be as open with that yellow as you want. As I mentioned before, one of the yellow's main strengths is the fact that they can raise the mood of the people they're around quite effortlessly. Yellows also take a great sense of satisfaction when the people they're around are enjoying themselves as much as that yellow is enjoying himself or herself. So obviously this presents a great opportunity for you. If for example, your team is going through a particularly tough period and the morale and engagement of a team tends to be dropping off a little bit, then you can capitalize on one of the main strengths of the yellow. If you ask that yellow to plan something fun and enjoyable for the whole team, this is a great idea because not only will a yellow take a great sense of pleasure in planning something fun, they're also going to make sure that the rest of the team is going to enjoy themselves as much as that person is planning it. So the sunny yellows love fun. And obviously fun is quite a subjective word. Whilst the blue might be very happy losing themselves in the detail and all the information, yellows, well, they see details and information not being fun. So when it comes to presenting that information to a yellow, the best thing to do is to have a few simple key bullet points and strip away as much detail as possible. With that time saved, if you want to build that relationship, the best way to use that time would be just simply to have a little chat beforehand. Now, I'm pretty sure all of us at some point in time has made a decision based on what our gut tells us. And that's quite an interesting thing because you can't really explain it so well, but it's like a strong feeling that you get to tell you to do something. And that's quite an interesting quirk of the yellows. They have a lot of gut feelings. So if you simply ask the yellow, how do they feel about something, as opposed to ask them in a much more structured and formal way, you'll probably get a much better response that glimmers with rich information and detail 
than if you ask them in a more structured way. As I said before, yellows hate repetition. They hate routine and they hate monotonuity. So make sure that the structure you give a yellow is as gentle as possible. Let them exercise their creativity. And on top of this, as I've said before, yellows aren't the best listeners. So it's a good idea to always follow up the outcome of a meeting to make sure the points are really hammered home. Now, yellows also love the new and exciting. So let's say, for example, your team is considering using a new software and they're going to roll it out to a few select individuals first before they roll it out to the wider team. My advice to you would be to make sure that a yellow has one of those licenses first. And that's because yellows are exceptionally resourceful individuals. They're going to manipulate it, they're going to play with it, and they'll basically come to grips with the software and the main functions and all the little extras it may do much faster than any other personality color would. Now I'm pretty sure we all have that one friend who is always late. And I'm pretty sure to get around this issue, you tell that person to be there half an hour earlier than the rest of your friends. Is that person a yellow? Because yellows are notorious for being incredibly optimistic about timing. A yellow's temperament is like a standard glass. They might be able to hold more stress than a red, but when they do erupt, it creates a bit more mess. Because if you empty a shot glass onto the desk and you empty a whole standard glass onto the desk, obviously the yellow's mess is going to be a bit more messy than red. With a red, you're sure of expecting it because it's an inherent characteristic of their behavior. But yellows tend to erupt less. And when they do erupt, oh boy, it can be quite a mess. And yellows aren't afraid of conflict, so it can quickly spiral out of hand. Just like all the other personality colors, yellows have stress factors. And an understanding of these will help you mitigate the stress of that yellow. So number one, yellows love to chat and they love being under the spotlight. So by pretending they're invisible or not giving them a chance to say or contribute towards any meetings, that can really stress out a yellow. Number two, yellows love enjoying flexibility, uh, autonomy, freedom, because it lets them exercise their creativity. But if you replace this with a very structured day to day, that's going to really stress them out because you're neglecting them with one of the key things they love. Number three, as I've said before, yellows are very much affected by the general mood of the people they're around. So if your team is going through a tough period, leading to a lot of constant bickering, arguing, or generally a lot of skepticism, this can really stress out a yellow because they like to believe everything is sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. When it comes to giving that bad news piece to a yellow, the key word here is patience. They're probably going to take it quite personally, so explain at the very onset of the meeting that this meeting is solely about how they can improve themselves. Explain that it's not personal repeatedly because the chances are they're not a good listener and they're going to lose themselves in a strong emotional response. But be patient and persevere with concrete examples and do not backpedal. The reason why backpedaling should be avoided at all costs is because a yellow is a very poor listener generally. So it might be quite easy for them to misconstrue what you're trying to deliver. But if you go into that meeting armed with a constant static message, that's really going to hammer a point home. And doing so will avoid any ambiguity or confusion on what the message is you're trying to deliver. And of course, this underlines the need for both patience and perseverance when it comes to giving that bad news piece to a yellow. So I appreciate as I've gone along, this has been quite a download because there's so much information out there. So what I've done is I've created a slide that basically gives you a very high level view of everything I've discussed throughout the video. I'm not going to talk it through because I've never liked it when someone just reads off a slide, but I am going to let you pause it and you can have a read for yourself. So what do you guys think of the yellows? Have you got any fun or interesting stories about a yellow? Please share this by using the comment box below. And on a note, please like and subscribe as well. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video, especially if you're a green, because that's the personality color I'll be looking at next week. And on that note, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And of course, I'm always going to end the videos with a nice little quote. So this week's quote is by Richard Branson, who says, a business has to be involving. It has to be fun and it has to exercise your creative instincts. Now I feel that is quite a yellow quote, so I'll leave it there and I'll see you next week.